The fate of the processionary caterpillar is therefore closely linked to that of the pine tree. Its favorite variety is the black pine, but if none are to be found, the processionary is an opportunist and will make do with other pine varieties. Its impressive claws allow it to grab all kinds of needles, thick or thin, hard or soft, smooth or rough. Its ability to adapt its diet has been a decisive advantage. Switching from one pine to another has helped it to cross over the Sierra Nevada. Mountains are the ideal environment for the pine processionary. When there are climatic changes, the processionary adapts its altitude in order to find its favored ecosystem. The mountains may be advantageous to this caterpillar, but higher altitudes equals lower temperatures. However, the processionary doesn't mind. This is one of the few insects that can easily survive the three months of winter. Its winter nest protects it from bad weather. This unique ball of silk has helped the processionary march upwards and along the mountain peaks, reaching altitudes that would seem unreachable. This is one of the places, the highest places at which we can find this animal in, okay. in Sierra Nevada. And uh, you think it's a recent expansion? Yeah, some years ago it was not here for sure. So it's, it's a recent uh, expansion. The nest thickens and evolves as the individuals grow bigger. Each caterpillar unrolls a silk thread as it moves. The regular toing and froing during the three winter months produces a constantly growing nest. The nest is made up of two superimposed layers. The inner layer is thick and serves to isolate. The outer layer is more flexible and serves as the framework. There is no entry or exit opening. To re-enter their impenetrable fortress, the caterpillars must push their way through the weave. The colder the region, the more solid the framework. The thicker the inner layer, the more the caterpillars are protected from the cold of winter and from predators. The nest acts as a solar receptor, absorbing nearby infrared radiation. Jérôme Rousselet is a biologist at the National Institute of Agronomic Research in France. He studies the thermal characteristics of the nests in order to identify at what temperatures the caterpillars will die. This nest is generally well exposed to the south so as to take maximum advantage of the sunlight. With this heat camera, you can see that the nest temperature is close to my body temperature. This is considerably higher than the outside temperature, which today happens to be in the vicinity of 54 degrees. The caterpillars can withstand the cold from the third larval stage onwards. But thanks to this nest, during the course of the winter, they'll be able to resist temperatures as low as 3 degrees. Below this limit, they die. They'll also die if a lasting cold spell stops them from leaving the nest at night to feed. When they arrived in the northern Iberian peninsula, the pine processionary stumbled upon the Pyrenees Mountains whose highest peaks rise to an altitude of 11,100 feet. This would seem to be an insurmountable obstacle, yet they crossed over. Thanks to the Atlantic coastline's warm winters, a trail of caterpillars bypassed the mountains by following the coast. 
On the other side of the range, they discovered a highway to the north. Man had inadvertently rolled out the red carpet, the greatest artificial pine forest in Europe, and it's a three-star restaurant for the processionary caterpillar. They invaded this new territory, which became the base for their conquest of France. Hervé Jactel, a researcher at the INRA, studies the impact of processionary caterpillars on forests. On these leaves, you can see how the processionary pine eats away at the foliage. When the eggs hatch, the young in the larval stages prefer to eat old leaves, two or three-year-old needles. The next larval stages are not as picky, or perhaps more voracious. They feed on the needles of the current year that contains more resin. When all the foliage is consumed in this fashion, the levels of defoliation can reach as high as 100%. This is what we can see in the trees in this colony, which is undoubtedly one of the most infested ones in all of the land and perhaps in all of France. The caterpillars wait for nightfall to leave the nest. They are vulnerable during daylight, but at night they are protected from many predators. They're not affected by the darkness because they're practically blind anyway. Their eyes are in fact four microscopic oculi, an atrophied arc-shaped organ. Their sense of smell, however, is highly developed. This is what guides them to the tastiest needles. Many animal species fast during the winter. Processionary caterpillars, on the other hand, gorge themselves with food every night. Four or five nests are all it takes to strip an adult pine tree from top to bottom in the space of one month. They diminish the tree's photosynthetic capacity, so it can no longer allocate as much energy towards growth. A drop in tree growth usually goes along with the defoliation caused by the processionary. And in rare cases, it can cause tree death. Defoliation may lead to death in two situations. The first is when the weakened tree is attacked by secondary insects, such as the bark beetle. The second is when the tree is defoliated over two or three consecutive years. The tree is so weak that it dies in the end. The pine processionary has exerted ecological pressure on this forest for hundreds of years. You'd think that the species would be content to prosper in this huge Garden of Eden, but at the beginning of the 20th century, they suddenly began to march towards the north. Scientists would like to know where their forward march will end so that the contaminated zones may be marked out. Mathematician Christelle Robinet has put aside her algorithms and her computer data in order to lend a hand to Jérôme Rousselet and his team. They've been alerted to the presence of processionary nests just north of Orléans. This region, until now, showed no signs of infestation. We've just entered a zone that wasn't colonized last year, so we're definitely at the colonization front, meaning a zone where the population is small and a few pioneering individuals have settled, not without difficulty. Our goal will be to tag the exact location of this last nest. If we find it, we will explore another area a few miles from here, in the hope of finding a totally processionary-free zone. This is how we succeed in establishing the border between the colonized and the non-colonized zones. Then it'll be your turn to play around with some models. 
The front line is a tricky area for the pine processionary. There are few nests now, but if the conditions turn out to be favorable, new colonies will propagate. I think there's one here. Yes, yes, there's one. Let's check it out. A small one in the back, about mid-height. OK, I see it. OK, we've got that one. I'll beep it. Perfect. Now we need to see if there are any others nearby. Back at the laboratory, Christelle is transferring the GPS data recorded in the field. Here is the GPS location of the nest that we saw in the forest yesterday. Let's assume that the pine processionary has settled in this 5 by 5 mile square. Thanks to observations conducted all winter long, we'll be able to establish the limit of the northern colonization front. If we increase the scale, we see that the colonization front has been charted all the way from Brittany to Switzerland. This recent expansion, which is progressing quickly and unexpectedly, intrigues scientists. They are studying the adult processionary caterpillar and the different stages of colonization in the hopes of understanding what is taking place. The caterpillars have sunk into the ground. They have spent several weeks in this position and have secretly turned into moths. This is the imago, or the adult form of the pine processionary caterpillar. This moth only lives for one day, so all its energy must be devoted to fulfilling its destiny to reproduce. <laughs> <laughs> 